you have titles and talks, I just let Tibby arrange everything. And uh, what I noticed on the sheet, it says I'm talking about mindfulness and stress reduction today. <laughs> so, and uh, I may or may not talk about mindfulness and stress reduction. <laughs> Overtly or inadvertently, somehow, most everything in my life relates to those themes, so we'll get there somehow. Um, I'm sure some of you have heard of loving kindness meditation before. It's something that's kind of getting some airplay these days uh, around the world. Maybe not as much as mindfulness meditation, but it's a close second. Uh, and uh, I'm often struck with some of the different ways it's described um, as a practice. Uh, the Buddha himself said very little about it. Um, he talked about it, he encouraged it, and he said, we sh you should train yourself and you should live with loving kindness for self and others and all beings. Uh, and in your thoughts and in your speech and in your actions, you should uh, endeavor to come from a place of loving kindness. It's important to learn how to be friendly remind yourself and train yourself and grow in your ability to sort of bring some friendliness into the way that you think and treat yourself, think and treat others, whether they're strangers or loved ones, people you like, people you hate. So think about these teachings in, in that sort of way. And uh, love and kind uh, love and kindness is a translation of a word metta in the scriptures. And it's best translated as an absence of ill will. Um, love's a squishy word in the English language. So what the Buddha is not saying is that you should love everybody and maybe the way you think that might come across. It's akin to some of the means we have for love. But it's maybe closer to this kind of concept of goodwill. The bare minimum for arousing a feeling of Buddhist loving kindness or metta would be the absence of any ill will for someone. So goodwill. You don't have to love somebody. You don't even have to like somebody uh, to sort of remain in relationship to them, absent any sort of feelings of ill will. So like not wishing them harm, or misfortune, or anything you can I hope that when somebody sort of cuts you off from the highway here, okay, I hope they get a ticket. That's ill will. <laughs> Lots of images, yeah, and that's a huge part of our kind of conscious experience. But that can stop. That can sort of settle down. And part of what we're doing with some of the forms of meditation we do are quieting those thoughts, are quieting, quieting those kind of processes, the proliferative mind, which is just constantly generating new thoughts and images and ideas about what, what I should do or opinions about things. That can sort of um, calm down and cease altogether for a period of time. And breath meditation in particular, um, the Buddha taught, has a very strong quality to kind of slow and tranquilize that sort of proliferative part of the mind down. Um, but what I would describe it as is like our common experience is what I call the divided mind. We're not wholeheartedly engaged with any one object of awareness, right? So like right now I'm kind of aware that he's filming over there and I can feel the <laughs> microphone here and I'm thinking, am I talking loud enough? Uh, and I'm looking around the audience and I'm aware somebody's got their hand raised and I'm thinking about how much time should I give to this question before I move to that, like, you know. Um, and then I feel my mouth dry. so. So much of our normal waking experience is divided up between billions of sense data flowing in and the mind 
thinking thoughts about what to do about some of them and ignoring others, right? Mm -hmm. um, in meditation, we're trying to sort of skillfully sort of move away from our mental energy sort of being invested in all those things and trying to sort of channel it into sort of one primary object. So in breath meditation, I direct my mind not to the past or the future, I direct it to the present moment experience of my breath. I'm an abide, pervading one quarter, with a heart imbued with loving kindness. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth. So above and below, around and everywhere, and to all as to myself. I will abide, pervading the all-encompassing world, with a heart imbued with loving kindness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. I will abide, pervading one quarter, with a heart imbued with compassion, Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth, so above and below, around and everywhere, and to all as to myself. I will abide, pervading the all-encompassing world, with a heart imbued with compassion, Abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will.